Hey everybody, David Carr once again, and I have for you another editing video. You know, the last one, uh, I got a really great response so far. Uh, it seems like people really like to have a little um, walkthrough tutorial on how to edit. Um, now, everybody's images are gonna be different and everybody's techniques are gonna be different. Um, so the way that I do things is not the way. It's a way to do it. Now, some of the things I'm gonna do are pretty much the way to do it, but um, you'll kind of figure out your own nuanced way to edit your own photos and kind of get them the, to the places that you want them to be. Um, and uh, so hopefully these are gonna be helpful for you, but let's dive right in, enough of my yapping. Okay, so the photograph I want to show you today is this shot of a coyote I shot out in Yellowstone National Park last year. I just got back from there again uh, recently, but uh, this is from last year. Uh, I wasn't able to get a shot uh, quite this good this time around, so I'm going back to last year's photos. And I really, really love this shot. I was very happy that I got it. Now, I'm gonna tell you right now, um, just this is raw, straight out of the camera. Uh, again, none of my sliders have been adjusted yet. Um, and I have already edited this photo, but I'm taking it back to the beginning just to show you kind of my thought process. Um, being that it's a raw photo, it, it's a little dull, you know, that's what raw photos are. They're, they don't, they're not very exciting right off the bat. Now the subject matter might be exciting, but the, uh, the overall presence of the photo isn't, isn't fully there yet. And that's, that's the whole reason we shoot raw so that we can actually bring all of that stuff out. Uh, so looking at this photo, the things that I have going for me here are the fact that well, it's a beautiful subject. And so this was a moment that I had to capture. Uh, I'm gonna just show you real quick. I shot this at 500 millimeters. You can see up here in my right-hand corner, this gives me some information on this photo. Um, I'm in my develop module. If you go to your library module, you can actually go down and see your, uh, your metadata down here and get a little bit more information. I shot it March 3rd, 2019. Uh, dimensions, focal length, uh, ISO was at 560. I shot this with my Nikon D5 uh, using a 300 millimeter f4 lens, but I had a teleconverter, a 1.7 uh, teleconverter from Nikon attached to the camera, which took it to 500 millimeters. And um, I can only shoot as low as f6.7 when I'm using that teleconverter with the 300 millimeter lens. I can't go down to f4, unfortunately, which I can which I can do when I'm just shooting at 300, but as you can see, that doesn't really seem to matter too much. Uh, the background is still quite blurry. Um, and at this point, it was all about just getting the shot. It was all about getting the expression and this this coyote looking at me, which is what, what we achieved here. So I'm very happy with the photo, but let's dive into what I would do to change it. Okay, first we're gonna go to the develop module here. And Right off the bat, I know that I want to crop this photo. I'm just going to go ahead and set a crop because I'm editing in Lightroom right now. I can always come back and, and uncrop it um, or, or recrop it, I should say. So by clicking the R key, that brings up our crop tool. You can see over here, I've got my padlock unlocked. And that means that this thing, you know, I can, I can crop it however I want. It's very freeform. Um, but I think I'm going to go ahead and keep it in the format, the two by three format that it was shot in. So I'm going to click my padlock. I'm going to come from the bottom right corner, bring this up, get the coyote's eyes kind of in that upper right third of the frame. Um, and I'm actually going to drag over a little bit. And I want to show you why, um, because on the left side of my image here, all up and down the left side, I've got all these bright distractions. Uh, I call them distractions because I don't really want to see all this bright stuff on the edge of my frame. When you look at the photo with all that, it, your eyes kind of get drawn over to the, to the left side of the frame. And there's nothing interesting going on here. There's nothing that is informing the overall photograph here. So I don't care about this area. I don't want to keep it in the shot. So again, we'll crop up a little bit like this. We'll bring it over. And I'm, I'm gonna try to lose every bit of the bright spots here, uh, every one of them. And yeah, that's pretty good right there. Let's let's come up a little bit. I mean, I want you to know when, when we talk about rule of thirds, it doesn't have to be absolutely spot on in, in the third. It, it, that just, it, just in that ballpark, there are areas where you don't want 
your uh, your your subject's eyes to be. You don't want it to be like this or something. I mean, let me click R again. That, obviously, that's too high. It's cutting the ear off. Um, you also don't really want it to be, you know, something like, uh, let's say like this or something. That's just, it's not as interesting. We're cutting the legs off. And I mean, you know, obviously these are things that you would probably control when shooting the photo. Um, but certainly when you go into crop, you don't want to crop in that sort of way. Um, it typically, typically speaking. So let's bring it back out. We're going to cut into the tree. I want the tree in the photo. And I, this is another important thing to remember. You don't want to have this much of the tree in the photo. It's, it's just a little too narrow. Um, that, that's, that doesn't look intentional. That looks accidental. But by coming out a little bit, having a decent amount, I mean, most of the, the width of the tree in the photo, it looks intentional. It looks like I meant to include the tree, and I did mean to include the tree. That's, that's part of the shot. Um, this coyote was just emerging from behind the tree, and uh, I want to kind of show the context. Besides, if we crop in and take the whole tree out, now we've got this branch that's just kind of coming right into the coyote, and, it's, and these branches, and it's just a, a little distracting to me. So by putting the tree in the shot and just leaving it there, I, I think it it completes the picture pretty nicely. Um, so I'm pretty happy with this crop overall. I might come down just a touch more here. Again, I'm not, you know, sticking to some hard, fast rule that the eyes have to be right here in the in that third. They just need to be within that vicinity. And I like that. I'm going to come up a little bit more. And just the disclaimer that I made in my last video, you're going to see me go back and forth. You're going to see me say things like, you're going to hear me say things like, Oh, I like that. And then you're going to hear me say, actually, I don't like it. Or actually, I'm going to change it. <laughs> so it's because this is, we're, we're working these photos. We're just trying to get them to the place where we like what we see. And I'm pretty happy, I believe, with this crop. I'm going to leave it alone for now. I'm not going to keep cropping. The first thing I'm going to do right now, though, is I can see, um, I definitely saw on the edge of this frame some chromatic aberration. And if we go up here and zoom into this area, right here. In fact, I'm going to zoom way in on this area. You'll see some purple fringing and some green fringing. It's not terrible. It's not, you know, a deal breaker, but this tends to happen when you add a teleconverter to a, a lens. You know, it just sometimes these little artifacts will show up and these little imperfections. They're not really affecting a whole lot of the rest of the photo, but still I want to get rid of them. So let's go back up to that area. We're going to scroll down on our panel here to lens corrections and we're going to click remove chromatic aberration and voila, it pretty much goes away. There might be a hint of it, but I'm not really worried about it at this point. You can go in in manual and you can fine tune and get rid of, you can really get rid of the, the, the purple. And you know, actually that did take a little more of the purple away. I mean, very subtle, not something to, to fret over too much. And then I'm going to go back to my, uh, lens corrections and click, I mean, I'm going to zoom out here before I click enable profile corrections. Let's see if that does anything meaningful to the photograph. All right, we'll click it. Ah, it just kind of bulges out a little bit more. Um, it doesn't really need to be done, but might as well just go ahead and do it. It's just applying the corrections that it's, that are built into, uh, the Lightroom software that kind of direct Lightroom to, to render your photo according to whatever lens you were using. Okay. So we fixed that. We fixed the other thing. Now we're going to look at the tonality of this photo. Let's go up to our uh, panel up here and look at the tone, you know, and the first thing I'm going to do, I'm actually going to click auto and just see what, what Lightroom might want to do. Okay. Not bad. It actually is. It's not bad. It, it brightened it up a good bit, which that was the first thing I was going to do was brighten it up. I'm actually going to uh, undo that though. Command Z. And because um, I want to do my own adjustments to it, knowing that that's really all it was going to do. That's pretty much what I was going to do anyway. So I'm going to bring my exposure up. And as I do that, it gets more washed out and, and a little less exciting. The, the contrast goes away, but that's okay. We'll add some contrast back in. And I usually, after I add contrast, then I pull the blacks down and just try to find that sweet spot where we're getting the true black where it needs to be, you know, especially around the eyes and then some of the fur. Um, just looking at it right now, uh, I can tell you right now, it's too cool of a shot. Um, it's not warm enough. So let's warm up the temperature a little bit and you'll see the fur and the trees 
as I do that, you'll see those really come out nicely. Uh, I really want to urge you to be careful when you warm your photos. It, it, when I first started in photography, I was really bad about doing stuff like this. And now it's very yellow. I mean, maybe that's a little more extreme than I was doing, but I felt like I was over warming my photos. So let's find that sweet spot where it looks natural. And I, that looks pretty natural to me there. Um, our tint is up in the magenta at plus 11. Uh, let's go back and see, uh, even just going back a little bit, it gets too green. I liked where it was at plus 11. Let's see what happens if we go a little higher. Hmm, actually kind of like that. I'm gonna leave it there for now. I may, as I stare at this photo for the next uh, little bit, I may decide that uh, it needs to be a little more magenta or a little less magenta or a little warmer, a little cooler, but we can always come back and change those things. Um, and I am gonna add just a touch of vibrance uh, just to separate the colors a little bit. I said this in my last video, sometimes I'll go really far, uh, too far, just to see what the extreme looks like and then pull it back from there and just kind of go back to not enough and then too much and then you just want to find that sweet spot. I, you're going to hear me say sweet spot a lot because that's just kind of a, a word that I use. Um, let's pull up the shadows and see if that does anything interesting. It's kind of cool. It's making the fur do some pretty neat stuff. Um, but you wanna be careful with stuff like that. Pulling back the highlights, let's see what that does to the snow. Now, one thing I'm gonna tell you right now with the snow is that snow oftentimes in photographs will look more blue. And I don't know how this is looking on your screen, but on my screen, it's got a little bit of a blue thing going on. So I'm gonna go down to my HSL panel and I've got it set up this way. This just tends to be the way I look at these, uh, these sliders. You can. You can do it di a number of different ways, but I, I like to just have all of them open because sometimes I want to go in and let's say the color of yellow is bugging me. I can kind of tweak the color of yellow a little bit, make it more orange or more green or, you know, uh, tweak the color of orange a little bit. And you want to be careful with this stuff. Don't get too excited. But one thing you can do if you're seeing that an area feels like it's too blue and it's really the only area that is showing any blue, then you can pull this blue saturation back to white and let's look at the whole rest of the photo don't look at the snow just yet i want to see if it's doing much to the rest of the photo before i commit myself to one uh general adjustment on the whole photo of blue uh, desaturating blue and um it's really not doing much to anything except this area and i kind of like I like that it's just white now because snow is white. Now, there are times when in certain shade and everything, our eyes will see the snow as being blue and that's okay. But I think in a photograph, you just really want to make sure snow looks pure. And you'll notice too, that this snow is very blurry. Um, I was shooting as, you know, as shallow a depth of field as I possibly could with this configuration of lens and teleconverter uh, at 6.7. Uh, again, that's not incredibly shallow but it's about as good as I could get uh, with this setup and so it's, it made for blurry snow which I actually really like and I don't mind that you can't see his paws and and back legs and everything because this is just a, a moment um, I was shooting low and uh, now that I'm looking at this photo a little bit more I'm wondering about my white balance again um, things are looking almost a little too yellow for me. Um, yellowish green, I think. So let's pull this back a little bit. Let's pull our magenta back up and see what that does. Oh, that's kind of looking nice now. I think that's looking really good. And you want to just find that spot where it's not too much, where the fur doesn't look too, you know, the whole image doesn't look like that. Of course, it looks like a faded photo from the seventies or something. Um, you want to, you want to just find that, that place where it looks about right. One thing I mentioned in my last video as well is that I will sometimes, uh, click the letter L twice and it will bring up this loop view, getting rid of all the other things around the frame, just so you can kind of see how is this going to look? If this was hanging on my wall, that's about how it would look, uh, assuming that it was printed properly. And, um, yeah, I don't. I think that looks pretty good, but you know, looking at it in this way, I'm seeing, I still am not totally happy with my tonality or my, my, my color tone, I should say. So I'm gonna warm it up again a little bit, click L twice to bring up my loop view. That looks better to me, that looks better. Yeah, I actually like that. 
I do want to see a little more contrast now, but what I'm going to do to add contrast is I'm going to play around with my texture and clarity because they really are adding a certain type of contrast around the details. So let's bring up the clarity a little bit and subtle people subtle. You don't want to get too crazy with it. Um, it it's very tempting to want to do stuff like this. Um, it might have instant impact on Instagram or something, but it's it's way too overprocessed in my opinion. You just want it to look natural, but you want to bring out as much of the, the texture as you can without it looking, um, well, stupid is the only word I can think at this point. <laughs> All right, let's pull up the texture, see what that does. Ooh, I do like the texture slider. I do like what it's doing to the fur. That's the main thing we're really seeing affected here is the fur. Um, and so pulling that texture up, let me pull the clarity back. I'm just going to double click the clarity and turn it off. And let's pull that texture back up. I kind of like it like this. Let me do L twice again, the, the loop view. Not bad. Let's just, let's just taper it off a touch and then L again. Okay. Let's leave it like that. I'm, I'm really happy with that. Um, now, with any animal or human being, uh, you're always going to be drawn to the eyes. And that's the thing you really want to, um, you, you really want everything to take the viewer into the eyes. And so right now, the brightest thing in this image, of course, is the snow in the foreground. And that's not going to change. And I'm not going to go darken this up too much. But what I am going to do is try to draw some attention to the eyes. So let's just zoom in on the eyes here. And uh, I can tell you right now, shooting with the, the, 1.7 teleconverter on the 300 millimeter lens. I do not get quite as crisp and sharp of shots as I would like. Um, I'm zoomed way in. You can probably see some noise and just that it, it's not completely pristine. And that's okay. I mean, hanging on a wall at, at, at a decent viewing distance, this is going to look fine. But, you know, I always would love to have a sharper photo if I, if I can get it. But at this point, I just wanted to try this teleconverter and see what getting in at 500 millimeters would do for me. And it's certainly a keeper shot. Uh, so one thing I'm going to do first is click the letter K. It's going to bring up my adjustment brush. And I'm going to go to... I have created my own little presets here. Um, Lightroom comes preloaded with some presets, but I've created a few and sort of changed a few of theirs and made my own. And one of them is called Eye Enhance. So when I click on that, you'll see what it's done here. It's gonna, it's gonna give me a little more exposure, actually a decent amount of exposure at uh, 0.54. And saturation's gonna go up. I don't normally use saturation or, or boost saturation in photos, but I will in local adjustments. Uh, and then sharpness is all the way up. And you're gonna see what this does. And you know what, I'm not committed to any of these sliders being like this, but this is just a kind of get me going and let me see if it's doing anything. And so I'm gonna paint over this eye, just in the eye. And we're gonna paint over this eye. And you can see, I mean, it's definitely getting brighter. You're probably not really seeing the effects of sharpening in this case, and that's okay. It doesn't really need to be sharpened too much. In fact, if you pull that back, let's see what it does. I mean, barely anything noticeable. I don't even really see what it's doing. So I'll just leave it up. It doesn't really matter at this point. Uh, my saturation, let's pull that back a little and then up a little. You, you don't want the eyes to look gimmicky, but you definitely want them to stand out. And the only way to really see if they're standing out is to zoom back out and look at this photo. What you can do is I'm going to stay in my adjustment tool, uh, but I'm going to hit the letter H, the, the H key, and it's going to drop that little pin. You won't see the pin. Even though I'm still in that tool, you won't see that pin. Then I'm going to go up, I'm going to go up here to fit, and it'll fit that to my screen. Let's click L two times. Okay, you can see that definitely made the eyes more of a feature. Your eyes are drawn into the coyote's eyes. Uh, one thing I might do now, uh, let's see, I'm going to zoom back into that area and I'm going to add another layer of the eye enhancement just on this eye because this eye is in shadow in a little more shadow and it's, it's just a little darker and I just want to see what would happen. So I'm going to actually go up here to new and just a new eye enhance. And let me click the letter H so you can see we've got the one on this eye that I've applied to both eyes. Now I'm just going to apply a new adjustment to this eye and you can see it already gets brighter. Let's click, I'm just going to click K and just get out of that tool because I'm probably done with it at this point. 
and let's pull back. Okay, now you can see the eyes are much brighter. Okay, so here we are. We're, we're looking at this photo. Uh, the eyes have been brightened up. I think maybe they're a little too bright. They did, they're just a little gimmicky in my opinion. Uh, so we'll click the letter K, bring these up. Let me, I'm, I'm actually just gonna pull the, the right eye back a little bit. I'll pull the exposure back just a touch. And you can see it getting darker and brighter. I was at, I was at 0.54. I'm gonna just come down a little bit here and just find kind of a good happy medium. Uh, let's hit click H get, you know, we can hide those, uh, those pins and see how it looks. We'll go back to fit. Okay. Not bad. Not bad at all. Pretty happy with that. Um, now that I'm looking at the photo, uh, yeah, I've told you this, I was going to do this. Uh, I'm going to, I'm just going to click H and get my pins back up there and then I'll click K and get out of the adjustment brush. Now that I'm looking at it, you know, and I said I would do this before, um, I, I feel like it may be too warm. Uh, so we're gonna pull it back. Every now and then I just kind of go back to, to that kind of thing, to the color balance. And color is so important, getting it right is so important. And, and it's tricky if you haven't calibrated your monitor in a while, that's a, a huge uh, way to improve the, the overall look of your photos is just to make sure that your color balance is spot on. Um, let me click L twice. Excellent. Okay, great. That looks pretty good to me. Now, I think what I want to do at this point is start looking at some edge distractions and see what we can do about those. Now, some of these are going to be really tricky to to deal with in in Lightroom. Um, it just it's very it's very hard to get Lightroom to remove a branch very accurately. But we're going to try it, and then if it doesn't work, we'll go into Photoshop. So I'm going to click the letter Q and it's gonna bring up my clone stamp or my healing brush. You have to decide which one you want. Let's start with clone and we can always change it. That's the beauty of these tools is that you can start with one, make your adjustment. If it's not looking right, you can try the other. I'm gonna go straight up to this corner. I, I usually start at my corners and just look for anything distracting. Thankfully, this corner is clear. This corner down here is clear. This one up here is just fine. I, there's a bright spot here, but it's almost inconsequential. I may remove it, but at this point it's not bugging me. Um, I'm going to go up to this branch and I'm just going to, let me increase the brush size and I'm going to drag across there and see what it does. Okay. It just grabbed right here and repeated it up there, which is not great looking. And then if I drag this down, it just, it still doesn't look good. So let's try healing. We're going to stay in that adjustment. We're going to click heal and see what that does. Um, you can click the letter H just like you do in the adjustment brushes and it will hide that, uh, that, that area that you have adjusted. Um, it's better, but it's still not great. It still doesn't look real. Um, so let's go up here to this area. You wanna just drag around and see, is there any area that like looks convincing? And to me, no, there's really not. I don't think there is. So let's just hit delete, get rid of that adjustment. We're not gonna do that. That's not how we're gonna get rid of this. Um, in fact, I don't know that we're even really gonna be able to get rid of this one that way. Uh, I, well, that's actually not so bad. The click H gets rid of it. That's not bad at all. I mean, that, that got rid of that branch and it makes other things look a little weird up here. Um, but we could fix those or I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you into Photoshop and we're going to, we're going to go from there. Cause that's, that's really where the, the power and the muscle is in being able to remove some of these distractions. Um, so I'm going to delete that selection and that, that edit, bring that ugly branch back in. Now I realize this is what was there. This is nature. There, there really were branches here and this bit of, you know, these pine needles here, they were there and honestly, these don't bother me too much. There are, there might be a case for removing them. Um, at this point, I'm not going to worry too much about it. Um, but what I'm going to do, because we do have some little bits here and, and here, I'm just going to crop in a little more because I think I can, I can spare a little bit of that space on the tree. I don't really need the extra information of the tree. I've got enough here to still show that there's a tree and it, it, uh, that's a quick way to eliminate some of that stuff. Uh, yeah, it's better. It's going to be easier to fix some of these other little distractions in Photoshop. Um, and I haven't really lost anything. I've just lost a little bit of the tree, but it, it still, to me, looks correct. It still looks like it's enough. Um, 
I just got a whim and realized that I think I want more contrast in this photo. So I'm going to bring the blacks down. And when I do that, I'm going to bring my contrast, the actual contrast I'm going to bring down as well, because it starts getting really, it starts looking like this and it's too much. Um, you want it to be just about right. Uh, you really, I mean, in this situation, you do have a lot of really bright brights and dark darks, and you really want to accentuate that. Now, when I did that, when I brought the blacks down and the contrast uh, brought that down as well a little bit, um, I feel like the texture started showing just a tad too much. So I'm gonna pull it back again. Okay, that looks good. I think that looks natural at least. And uh, so I, I think what I'll do now is go into Photoshop. And to do that, I'm gonna click Command E. And that'll bring up Photoshop and it'll take a second. Um, okay, so now we're in Photoshop and now is where the heavy lifting can begin. If you're new to Photoshop, um, it can be really intimidating. You'll see all these tools over here and think, what in the world does any of this mean? And well, like, it's so scary. You'll just be like, I don't even wanna mess with it. I'm afraid I'm gonna like screw up my whole computer. You're not gonna screw up your whole computer, <laughs> but, but it is intimidating. But what I want you to do is when, once you're in Photoshop, just, just pause for a moment. You've got your photo there, it's ready to be edited, but this works differently than Lightroom. So what you're gonna do is initially, I want you to click Command J and it's gonna bring up another layer. It's gonna create a copy of that background layer. So now if we mess anything up in this layer that we're editing, we have the background layer, we have the original, we can always go back to it. Um, it's a really great habit to get into because Photoshop is what is called destructive editing. Meaning if I go in here and I go ahead and uh, let's say dodge an area and make it much brighter. Um, let's see, I'll just kind of show you something here. If I go in here and go like this, I have just literally affected the pixels in this photo when I did that. Now, I didn't affect them on that background layer, and that's the whole reason why we create a separate layer. Uh, and in certain situations, we'll create multiple layers, but I'm not gonna get into too much of that today. So I'll bring this back. I'll click Undo by clicking Command-Z, and it gets rid of that nasty adjustment that I just made. I just wanted to show you that that is destructive. I mean, it is literally affecting the pixels. Um, Whereas in Lightroom, it's cre it's literally creating layers in Lightroom. It's doing what we did here, and it's just creating multiple, multiple layers. And that's why sometimes when you start doing a lot of local adjustments in Lightroom, that's why it starts to slow down. And you really want to be careful not to uh, try to do too much in Lightroom where it's just going to bog it down and it's going to... the 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 spinning beach ball or whatever your computer shows you when it's working and when it or when it gets hung up unfortunately you don't want to get it to that place um, so Photoshop also is very fast it's very rapid uh, editing so what I'll do is I'm just gonna go straight up to this corner and zoom in and we're gonna start working on these little areas here these are the areas that I feel like are, are uh, in need of attention so the first thing I'm gonna do I'm gonna click J the J key it brings up my spot healing brush tool. It might bring up your healing brush tool or it might bring up your patch tool. You really need to make sure you're, you, you know which one you're in and you'll, you'll get the hang of it. But the, the letter J will apply to any of these three tools. We're gonna start with the spot healing brush tool. It's usually one of the first things I do in Photoshop. Uh, and I'm gonna increase my brush size by clicking my right bracket key. And now I'm just gonna drag right over this branch and see what it does. Voila, beautiful. Gets rid of it so nicely. Now I'm gonna drag over this one. Bada bing. And you know, you can go in and clean up little spots just by clicking here and there. Um, it is really, really, really powerful. So much more powerful than the, the Lightroom tool. Uh, so I, I love the, what it did there. I'm gonna increase my brush size here. A lot of times when I'm in my spot healing brush tool, I've got one hand on the mouse and one hand on the bracket keys because I, I, I constantly want to increase the size, uh, shrink the size, depending on what I'm trying to edit out. And sometimes I'll tell you, it won't edit it out well and you'll have to go back and do something else. But in this case, look at that. It's so much better. Now, every now and then you, you might want to zoom into the area and see if anything looks repetitive, but to me, it's not really doing too much of that. It looks pretty convincing. Um, the more you zoom in though, the more you can start pixel peeping and be like, oh, I need to get rid of this and this and this. And 
And then when you zoom all the way back out, you'll realize, oh, that's such a small area. It's probably not worth getting too hung up on every little detail. Uh, but at the same time, make sure you do it right. Do it right the first time. All right, now I'm looking at these pine needles. I don't like the way they look. Um, these are probably gonna be a little more difficult to remove using my spot healing brush, but I'll just give it a try and see if it does anything. Actually, that worked pretty well. I mean, this was all blurry anyway, and it just added some more blur there. So, you know, it's surprising sometimes what it can do. Um, now, I'm not gonna try to get rid of all of this because that would just be too painstaking and, and unnecessary. Uh, but what I will do is look for the highlights in here. The, the ones that are standing out and I'm just going to shrink my spot healing brush tool way down, uh, maybe to there. You always want it to be a little wider than the area you're trying to remove. And, um, yeah. And then just start removing little bits and pieces here. The, the brighter spots, the ones that just, they, they might stand out. They might draw your attention too far away. Uh, okay. And so, uh, we'll just keep doing that. Just kind of removing little bits and pieces here. Not too bad now. I'm really not too worried about it. There's This one's a little bright. Um, and you might see what I'm doing and think you are just nitpicking the heck out of this thing. But this is what I do. And every now and then you want to zoom out and just see how it's looking. I mean, it is this area is a little bit um, of a distraction to me. But in certain situations, it's just going to be what it's going to be. We there There really is a way to get rid of all of this but it's very painstaking and it will take you a lot of time. And so for the, for the sake of just showing you some, some general editing here, I'm not gonna go there today, but I am gonna take things out like these brown pine needles. Um, I just don't like them. I don't think I would paint those in if I was painting this as a photo, uh, as, a, as, a, as a painting on canvas, I should say. I wouldn't put brown pine needles in right there. I'd probably just leave most of it green. Uh, here's a highlight that we can get rid of. If you're going to leave things like this on the edge of your frame, just try to get rid of as many of the highlights as you can, the little areas that just are distractions. Okay. Nice. We'll back up a little bit, see how it's looking. Not bad. We've got a couple of branches here. I'm just going to try to remedy some of that. Um, I'm gonna, I'm, again, I'm still in my spot healing brush tool here, folks. Um, let's drag across this one. See what that does. Every now and then you gotta just kinda hit the other little areas around it. Get rid of that one. Get rid of this one, this. Now, let's just see if I get rid of that. If I back up and look at this photo, this is a distraction to me. I don't like this at all. These, not so much, It's they're not bothering me that much. Um, but this, I, I don't really wanna keep this branch in. And I'm gonna show you right now another way to get rid of something like this. You're gonna still be in the J, uh, you're still gonna be using the J key, but now you're gonna go down to the patch tool. So you, ha you literally have to go up here and click to get into the patch tool. And with this, you, you draw by clicking and just drawing, you just draw a area around the, the, the area that you want to remove and then you drag it. And when you let go, it does this kind of thing. Now. Folks, for those of you who are not that familiar with Photoshop and you're afraid of Photoshop, this is one of the first things that used to frustrate me so much that I, I did not know how to, to fix. And I would literally turn this thing off, this whole uh, program off, because I was so frustrated by it. But getting rid of what we call the marching ants, I did not know how to get rid of them. And I would hit there, I would sit there and hit escape and it wouldn't do anything and um, it would frustrate me. So what I finally discovered is very simple is click command D and they go away. <laughs> so remember that command D, uh, will, will get rid of those. Now that did a great job that just totally removed that. Um, I'm going to go back into my actual spot healing brush tool, clicking up here. I'm going to click this, click this, click this. I'm just going to, and you're, I'm kind of moving rapid fire here across these areas. We're going to just kind of paint that out there, paint these highlights out here. Uh, might as well get rid of that while we're at it. There's a little spot there. Again, I'm just cleaning all this up to where nothing is going to draw your eyes away too much from your main subject. Now, when we get down into this little area here, again, I'm not going to remove all of this. Uh, it is possible to do. It really is. Um, and it's not that hard, but it's a little bit tedious and I'm, I'm not going to get into that today. So, but what I will do is again, get rid of little distractions and maybe get rid of these brown pine needles once again and bada bing bada bing 
just kind of clicking these things. Maybe get rid of a few uh, of the needles. Um, let's back up and just see. Every now and then you do need to back up and, and really look at what you've got. Okay, so I think that's so much better. I think that looks so much better. Um, I can go around my frame and I don't see a lot of distractions, a lot of things that are pulling my eyes away from the main subject. One thing you will want to do, and it, it, every photo is going to be different, but um, you will want to start looking around the whole photo and see, are there any other areas that are distracting? Maybe not right around the edges, but just in the photo. And I see one that's very minor, but I figure I might as well take it out. And it's right up in here. I'm just going to take this. That's not bad. The great thing when there's like pine needles or leaves or stuff like that is it, it there's so much information there that it it's it gets kind of camouflaged, you know. So you don't have to get everything exactly perfect for it to look pretty convincing. Um, and uh, let's see, we'll get rid of that little dot there, this little dot there, and I'm just cleaning up a few little spots here and there. It's it's none of them are deal breakers, but this just little things that I'm seeing that I feel like maybe I don't want to see. Here's a little highlight right on the edge. Might as well see if we can just get rid of all of that. Yep. Fills it right in nicely. Get rid of that. Let's fill in here. I should probably have a larger brush at this point, but I'm just going to see what happens if I do that. Yeah. The edges are now solid except for here, which that's, ex that's acceptable. There's a little spot over here that I think is maybe too bright. Okay. Again, little spots here and here, here. Okay. I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, actually, no, you know what? I was noticing this branch earlier and I think it's ugly and it's kind of going right down into the back of the, uh, the coyote. And so I'm going to see if I can get rid of this branch effectively. Um, again, in my spot healing brush, I'm going to drag it from there to there. Look at that. I mean, it's pretty magical what it does. And this gets kind of all murky, but that's okay. That's just, it's very camouflage, like I said. Um, now, it did kind of make it where, where's the end of this branch? It just sort of disappears. Try just removing part of that and maybe a little more. And you just kind of experiment. And at any point when you're doing this, if you're like, oh, that's not right, just click Command-Z and it'll start bringing that back. And you can keep clicking Command Z over and over. Um, there, you can adjust how many undos you get uh, in your in your settings within Photoshop, but uh, usually the, the, it gives you by default a fair amount and you, you'll be able to, uh, to, to do most of the undoing that you need to do. So uh, let's see, uh, there's a little highlight there I'm gonna get rid of. And uh, that looks pretty good to me. I think we're gonna go with that. All right, so. I am finished working on this. When you are ready to bring this back into Lightroom, because that's where you want it to ultimately land if you're using Lightroom, um, you want to click Command S. And you'll see down here it says saving 99%. And it's saving it to Lightroom, but it's not going to open Lightroom back up for you. It, you have to go down and click Lightroom. And there's the photo that we just worked on in Photoshop. And uh, it's going to sit near the original one that we worked on in Lightroom, which was an NEF, a raw file. Um, and you can look at the difference between the two. I mean, you can see how much we took out. And, you know, maybe those distractions don't really look like distractions when you see them that way. But when you compare them and go from, from that to that, to me, it makes a pretty big difference. It's just all these little things that draw your eyes away from the main subject. The last thing I'm going to do to this photo is I'm going to click K, bring up my adjustment brush, and I'm going to go to my Dodge Lighten brush, and it's it's set at 0.25. I'm going to increase the size of my brush a little bit, and I'm just going to paint over the face just a little bit of lightning, just to bring more attention to the face. Click K, and I'm going to click the letter F now, and F is going to bring this into full screen, and we'll be able to see it in all its glory. And to me, that looks really, really wonderful. I'm very happy with this photograph. Um, and the beautiful thing is you can still work on it. You can still do some things. It's, it's, it brought it back as a PSD, a Photoshop file. Um, and, but you can still do some adjustments to this. Uh, I, if I wanted to crop it some more, let's say that 
uh, I wanted it to be more like this. I could do that and uh, maybe come down a little bit. And, you know, sometimes I will come back and, and recrop a little bit just to see it, it was there another view that I that, that, that was a little bit better. And um, to me, actually, I, I kind of like that. Uh, now, it brought some more highlights up into my edges, but nothing too serious. Um, but I'm going to leave it like that. And uh, yeah, I think it looks really good. I'm, I'm very happy with that. I hope that's helpful for you. I know I went over a lot of little things. I know there was a lot of nitpickiness, a lot of detail. Um, but these are the kind of things that you want to do when you're editing your photos. So that's all I've got for you on that one today. I know that's a long video. I appreciate you enduring the, the, all of the, the talking and just all the little tedious adjustments. And uh, I hope these just get better and better as they go. Uh, I hope to give you more information that can help you to, to make these, this useful and something that you can uh, really grow with. And uh, thank you very much for watching, and I'll be back with more edits very soon.